Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're gonna be answering the question, what is an ETF? Hey guys, my name is Michael and I'm an accountant from Australia. On this channel, we talk all things personal finance, such as investing and taxes, so that we can finally move out of our parents' home. Just kidding. Kind of. As I mentioned in the introduction to this video, we're gonna be answering the question, what is an ETF? Now, I get asked by lots of my friends all the time, which stocks should I buy? My dad told me that this stock was a good one. What do you think about that one? And my response usually revolves around, don't worry about picking an individual stock. Think about something like an ETF or an index fund. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about what is an ETF? How can you get started investing in them? And then we're gonna jump on the computer and I'm gonna run through a couple of different examples and break down what an ETF is so that you know exactly what you're looking at when you go to research it for yourself. So there's two ways we can answer the question of what is an ETF. The first is the technical investment jargony way, and the second is a cool analogy using chocolates. I think I know which one I would prefer. So let's pretend that you've gone to Woolworths and you're standing in the chocolate aisle. There's so many different chocolates you can choose from and you just get overwhelmed because there's so many options. Well, what you could do instead is reach for a box of favorites and that way you get a little bit of everything. You get a tiny little snack bar sized chocolate and so you get a little bit of everything in one simple package. And so the comparison I'm trying to make is that ETFs are like a box of favorites. Rather than having to pick one chocolate or in this case, rather than having to pick one stock, you can just pick the whole market and take home the box of your favorites. So when you're compiling your ETF, you can just pick funds and put them in your basket. So, oh, yep, get some ANZ. Next, yep, some A2 milk, we'll put that in there. Rio Tinto, we'll throw that in. BHP, Fortescue, throw that in there. NAB, and why not throw in some Woolworths as well. And that's how you pick an ETF. So once you've come up with a justification to yourself for buying a box of favorites to make a silly little metaphor for a YouTube video, let's talk about the benefits of ETF investing. At the forefront of the benefits of ETF investing is diversification. Diversification is this idea of having your cake and eating it too. Let's just think of a scenario where you don't wanna diversify and you just wanna pick one stock for the rest of your life. Well, if you wanna be conservative and preserve your capital for a long, long time, you might wanna go for a larger blue chip stock such as West Farmers. Well, this stock has a pretty good track record of long-term capital growth, as well as paying a dividend yield of about two to 3%. And while West Farmers may prove to be a really great long-term investment, by putting your money there, you're missing out on other opportunities, such as higher growth potential companies like Afterpay. Afterpay's business model is built around their technologies, which means they have potential to have a higher profit margin, which also means they have potential to be a higher growth stock. While West Farmers may be a better long-term play, you may be missing out on some higher growth over here at Afterpay. So that leaves us with why don't we have bloody both? And that's where ETFs come in. ETFs provide you with the options to invest in a whole index fund, in a whole commodity, in a whole category of different companies so that you can get exposure to everything. If you buy an Australian index fund, you would have exposure to West Farmers, you would have exposure to Afterpay, so you have your cake and eat it too. Now the next benefit of ETF investing is it's super simple to buy. It's just as easy as any other stock purchase because you just need to log in through your existing brokerage account. There, once you've found the ETF you're interested in and would love to purchase, you just need to click the buy button and you can even set up a recurring payment to put in money every single month. ETFs are a simple way to make sure your money is working for you. In fact, Warren Buffett, one of the world's greatest investors, has advised his estate that when he passes to invest 90% of his wealth into a low cost index fund and the other 10% into short term government bonds. Basically, when he passes, he wants his wife to be investing in ETFs. And this is the world's greatest investor. He has made all of his money by analyzing companies and picking the best company, best stock to invest in over the long term. But why would he, the world's greatest stock picker, advise his wife when he passes to just invest in index funds and ETFs. Because it's so simple and will preserve capital for a long, long time. That's literally the definition of investing, to provide an adequate return while preserving capital. I think I've convinced you that ETF investing is a good idea. 
So now we're gonna jump on the computer and I'm gonna show you a couple of things to look out for when you do your own research into ETFs. That includes what is the objective of the fund, what holdings, what stocks do they have, um, and also what are the fees that you'll have to pay if you are a holder of the ETF. So let's jump on the computer. Okay, so we're on the computer now and I just wanna show you three different ETFs that you can buy from the Australian Stock Exchange. Um, and so we're just gonna be looking at the website of each ETF. I also wanna show that you can buy different types of ETFs. So you can either buy Australian shares, you can buy international shares, you can even buy stuff that isn't to do with companies. So you can buy property, you can buy gold, other sorts of commodities um, through ETFs. And I'm gonna explain that a little bit later. The first one that I wanna share with you has a stock ticker IOZ and it is the iShares Core S&P ASX 200 ETF. Basically what that means is that this fund is trying to be Australia's 200 largest companies. Um, and you can just see a little bit more information about it here. So you can see here that the last trading price was $28.27. Um, the one day change was up 16 cents, which is a, uh, half of a percent and the management fee is 0.09%, which is great. We want our ETFs to be as small a fee as possible because you're not really paying for any sort of um, professional's opinion or advisors or anything like that. Basically what these companies like BlackRock, Vanguard, BetaShares, what they're gonna do is just put together a fund that's supposed to track the index as a whole. Um, so why IOZ, as you can see here, they've got three, um, three reasons why you might wanna consider this ETF. The first is the low cost access to the 200 largest companies on the ASX, which stands for the Australian Stock Exchange in one single fund. Um, so that's great. The second is exposure to the leading index of broad Australian equities, basically the same point. And three is you can use this at the core of your portfolio for your essential domestic allocation. Um, so basically they're just saying this would be a great way to get exposure to the Australian um, share market. So if we scroll down, you can see their performance over the last um, bit. Um, the total return is what the, their fund is and the benchmark is what they've been aiming for, um, bas basically what has the Australian market done. So as you can see, they mirror very closely to the actual stock index. Um, if you keep scrolling down, you can see key facts and all that sorts of things. You can see that they hold 201 different assets as a part of this fund. So um, diversification, like we talked about earlier, this is fantastic for that. Um, if you scroll down further, they report here some of their sustainability characteristics. So um, what their environmental, social and governance sort of risks and opportunities are. Um, so if that's important to you, here's where you can find a bit of information about that. A bit more information about those sorts of things. You can see how much of the fund is in different sort of involvement, involvements that specific um, groups might be anti, so anti-tobacco, firearms, weapons, and all that sort of things. Um, so you can see percentage of the holdings here. And if we scroll all the way down, we can see the stocks that this fund currently holds. So uh, the top 10 here being Commonwealth Bank, BHP, CSL, Westpac, NAB, ANZ, West Farmers, Woolworths, Macquarie, and Rio Tinto. So I'm sure you've heard of most of those companies before we scroll to the right here, we can see the weighting. So nearly 8% of the this fund is in Commonwealth Bank of Australia, which is quite common. It's like the biggest, um, I think the biggest market cap in Australia. So um, lots of funds you'll see heavily weighted, not equally weighted like this. Um, as you, If you just scroll a bit further down, you can see the percentage of the fund that's within these industries. So immediately if you're buying this one fund for $29, you're getting exposure to all these different industries. So the financial sector, so that's all the banks. Uh, materials is huge in Australia with Rio Tinto and all those sorts of mining companies. Um, and you're even getting exposure to real estate. So that's pretty cool. If you wanna read a little bit more about that here, there's some literature and reports and all that here. Um, and here it just says, when you trade, you can just buy it through any other, uh, you can just buy it through any brokerage like any other individual share. So that's the first one I just wanted to cover. That's the iShares Core S&P ASX 200 ETF, which is Australia's 200 largest companies. Next, I wanted to share NDQ, which is BetaShares NASDAQ 100 ETF. The NASDAQ is an exchange in the United States, 
um, that has mostly tech companies in it. So um, if you want to be investing in the NASDAQ, you're going to be getting exposure to lots of tech companies. Um, and as they say here, it's the largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ. So it won't be any banks or anything like that. Um, yep, yeah, we can just scroll down here. But what I really want to show you is that this portfolio holdings. So when you're buying this one, uh, this one share for how much? $28 again, you're then getting exposure to probably the most notable companies, most well-known brands in the world. So Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Facebook, Google, Nvidia, PayPal, and Intel. That's pretty cool. With only $28, $29, you can invest in all of these companies. Whereas one Tesla stock is over $400. So if you wanna have exposure to some of those tech companies like Apple, Amazon, Tesla, the NDQ index fund would be a great place to start. And the last ETF I wanted to share with you is the Vanek Vectors FTSE International Property ETF. Um, and so as I mentioned earlier, you can actually buy real estate through ETFs. And while it, I don't mean you have to go out and get a mortgage and talk to a real estate agent and pay his commission and all that, you can actually buy into a fund with other investors and then this fund will go out and buy all of the real estate for you. And then what they do is when they get the rental income is then they're gonna pay that back to their investors and that's what you're gonna see as your dividends. This uh, stock ticket is actually REIT, which usually is REIT, which actually stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can see that their dividend is paid out every quarter. So there's four every year. Management costs 0.43%. Uh, the most recent trading price here is $18. So for only $18, you can get exposure to real estate. You don't need to go out and buy a mortgage or anything like that. And if we scroll down here and we find the top 10 holdings, you get exposure to these different property groups. Um, as you can see, lots of them are in the USA. Um, if you look all the way down here, most of it is in the USA, but we also have some Japanese, UK, German um, real estate. This ETF in particular is really cool because they can show you the different sub industry weightings of real estate here. So with um, COVID and lockdowns happening in 2020, office real estate had a pretty big hit. Um, and so if you were in that business and only that business, you probably had a really tough year. Um, but residential real estate has been going gangbusters recently with low interest rates and all of that. So um, as you can see here, you get a exposure to re retail, residential, office real estate, um, all in this one ETF for only $18. So it's a great way to invest in not only stocks, but also real estate. All right, guys, I'm just sitting here filming this video and I've completely forgotten to film an outro. So thanks for making it this far in the video. If you enjoyed, please leave a comment and like the video. I upload videos like this every single week on personal finances. So if this is of something of interest to you, please consider subscribing.